Hi, today in the Azure Migration Series, we're going to be adding a pipeline to our example project. Now, the reason we're doing this is that it allows us to automate all of our continuous integration and continuous deployment. This means whenever we push any code to our Git repo, it's going to automatically build it for us, test it for us, deploy it for us. And then really all the things that we'll be adding in the series will kind of be driven by the pipeline. So that's the reason we're adding it in at the start. One thing to note before we start is that Azure and Azure DevOps are actually two separate services. So we're going to be using Azure DevOps specifically for this. What we need to do is go to the project settings and we need to go down here and we need to turn pipelines on. Now we have the pipelines. We can go into here and we can create our first pipeline. So the first thing that we're given is a load of different repo choices for where our code lives. Ours is in GitHub, so we're going to choose GitHub. And now it lets us pick a repository. We're going to pick the modernization series. We're going to pick the .NET Core one because that's what we're using. And it will give us a little bit of starter code like this to begin with. So we're quickly going to run through all the parts of the default pipeline it's given us. So the first one here is the trigger and it's set to main. This means when anything is pushed to our main branch, it triggers the pipeline. We next have our pool or the VM image. By default, our agent is one that Microsoft gives us for free. This basically tells Microsoft here what operating system we want that agent to be running on. As our app is .NET Core, it will build on any of them. So here we have a load of variables. These are similar to what you'd see in code. So this first one is which solution file we're going to be building. And this here basically means look in every single folder and look for any single file that ends in .sln. Next, we have a load of steps. Now, all of these steps are made up of individual tasks. The tasks run specific tools, which are defined by Azure typically, although you can make your own. And these run different kinds of functionality for us. So the first one is going to install NuGet to the agent. These build agents here that they give us kind of come with basically nothing. So we're going to start by installing that. Then this is going to do all of the installs from our solution, um, getting the settings that the solution stores for NuGet to get all of our packages. And then the important one for us, it's going to call VS Build. The ats at the end are kind of like version numbers. So this is assumingly the second NuGet command package they've released, although sometimes they have at zero. The last one is going to test it. We don't have a test project yet, so we're going to get rid of that. There we go. Now we're going to hit save and run. Now, one thing to note is when you're setting all of this stuff up, it's going to ask you permission for different things on GitHub mostly along the way. This is to let Azure DevOps talk to GitHub so that whenever you push your code, there's a hook set up, which it does for you, to allow the pipeline to trigger. But I've already done that, so it's not gonna show fast. And um, we're gonna hit save and run. Now, as we can see, the status at the moment is queued. This means it's waiting for a build agent to be provisioned for us to run all the jobs on. We click on the job, get some information sometimes, and now it's started it. So now we can see that this is going on. And as it goes through the job, all of those steps that we saw before are going to come down here as individual bits like initialized job is. Here we go. So it's going to check out the code. It's going to install NuGet. It's going to run all the install command and it's going to run our build command. And now we can see that it's finished. And if we go up to this number at the top is the build number it's generated for us. And we have a load of warnings because these are actually the warnings it's picked up from Visual Studio itself. It displays them straight here for us. And if there were any errors, it would similarly display them there. And we can see here at the bottom that the job has passed and it's taken two minutes and 15 seconds. And what this has also done is sent me an email to tell me that it succeeded with some extra information here, details about the warnings. But what we really want to know is when the build fails, something has gone wrong. So if we go back to Azure DevOps and we go into our project settings, next we go to notifications. What we want is for a build failing. So we're going to choose who we want to deliver it to. And at the moment, let's just pick everyone on the team, which is just me. And now we're going to go back over to Visual Studio. What we're actually going to do is just enter some junk in here. And by doing this, we're going to actually demonstrate the failure happening. At the moment, we're just pushing to main. I'm not worrying about branches for this example right now. And now that the builds run, we can see that it's failed. And we've also received an email telling us that it's failed and giving us the details on why that's happened. Now here we can see the pipeline file in the base of our repo. One of the last things we're going to do is we're actually going to move this. So we're going to cut it. We're going to go into our example projects. And here where we've created another folder for this episode, we're going to paste it in the top level there. This is so as the series goes on and the pipeline file evolves, each one of these projects can have its own version of it. So you can see how it progresses over time. 
First of all, the build won't actually break. The pipeline file, even though it's located here, when we pull in from Git, it's going to run from the base of the repo. And because it's looking for any solution file anywhere, it's going to find the one we want and run it. But what this also means is it's going to find the solution file in here and also every other one that we add on here. And we just want it to find ours. So what we can do is we can go into Azure and we can fix that. Now, the easiest way that I found to change where the pipeline is located is by going to edit. We're going to go to three dots at the top and we're going to go to triggers. Next, we're going to go over to YAML. So in here, we've got the YAML file path setting. So if we click on the three dots here, so we can go into the project where we know it is. And here is the file. Now, the last thing we want to do here is just click on save. because There's one more change we want to make before we actually run it. So if we go back to our pipeline and click on edit, what we can do is we can actually change this solution file to be where our solution lives now, rather than looking at all of them. So what we need to change it to is this path here because it's running from the base of our repo. So it needs to go into these two folders before it finds the solution folder. And now we can just hit save and this will run it for us. And here you can see that the build has run successfully. One last thing I wanna show you is if we go into the one that ran before, we can see it's got 40 warnings. This is when it was running both projects together. Now that we've specified the file again, we only get 20 because it's only running the one file. So there we have it. We've successfully added a pipeline to our example project. Now we've got a basis to build up the rest of our pipeline in the future. If you've enjoyed today's video, come and check out what we've got going on next week, where we'll be looking at adding tests to our project so that when we get to the refactoring part, we know we're not going to break any of the implementation. Thanks very much.